Hey third graders, Miss Moran here and happy Tuesday. Today for our ELA recorded lesson, we are going to be working with literary elements again. And with literary elements, we focus on characters, setting, and plot. So the characters in your story are going to be either people or things or animals. Okay, and we're just really focusing on the main characters that help our story progress. There's going to be some non-important characters in the story that we don't really need to concern ourselves with because they don't help our story progress. We're also going to be looking at the setting. The setting is when the story takes place and where the story takes place. And then we have plot. Plot is just a fancy word for, a fancy word for events. So we're looking at the first, next, then last. You remember that from yesterday? I bet you do. Okay, so today's story, I am going to read LARF. And this book is found on Epic. I know that my class has looked into Epic. If you haven't, you should ask your teacher about it because it is so amazing. All right, here's our story, LARF. Have you ever felt like nobody knows you even exist? That's exactly how LARF feels, and he likes it that way. LARF is a Sasquatch, the only Sasquatch it seems. He lives in a quiet, he lives a quiet life in the woods with his bunny, Eric. So here we're meeting a character, right? It also told us the setting. He was almost discovered once or twice. A hairy, seven-foot-tall, scarf-sporting man-beast is pretty hard to miss. It's a guy in a gorilla suit. An escaped circus bear. Aunt Mildred? A computer-generated fake. But luckily for him, people rarely believe in anything new. Larf knows one would Larf knows no one would ever leave him alone if they found out he was real. The thought of all that attention makes him sweaty. Larf fills his days happily on his own, jogging, taking Eric for walks, and gardening. Until one morning, he notices an odd article in the newspaper. It claims that a Sasquatch is scheduled to make an appearance today in the nearby city of Hunterfitz. How can that be? He's not planning a trip to Hunterfitz, and even if he was, certainly wouldn't be going on a Wednesday. It's laundry day. Larf realizes this can only mean one thing. He is not the only Sasquatch in the world. This could change everything. Larf isn't sure he wants to ch wants a change, but having another Sasquatch around opens up so many possibilities. Teeter-tottering would no longer be impossible. He could share hair grooming tips, and his witty commentary on cheesy movies would no longer go to waste. That settles it. Larf has to meet this other Sasquatch. Traveling to Hunterfits is generally something that he avoids but this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Besides, Larf is a master of camouflage. He is sure to go unnoticed. Billy, don't stare. What is that? Aunt Mildred? On the way, Larf starts to wonder what the other Sasquatch will be like. If this guy is making appearances, then he could be a bit of a showboat. Larf isn't sure he wants to be around someone like that. What if they don't get along? What if the other Sasquatch doesn't like Larf? What if he does like him and wants to move in? What if he doesn't pick up his laundry? What if he eats meat? What if he's allergic to Eric? Or worse yet, what if he is a she? Larf really isn't ready to meet a girl. He hasn't had a bath in ever. By the time he arrives, Larf is having second thoughts. He really does enjoy being on his own. All the activity, all the people, and all the noises are making things worse. Larf can hardly see straight, let alone think straight, in all this hubbub. Does the other Sasquatch actually like being around so many people? Will life with someone else always be this loud? 
Suddenly, Larf spots the other Sasquatch, but something doesn't seem quite right. Why are its eyeballs not moving? Is that a zipper down its belly? And since when could a Sasquatch wear perfectly normal sized running shoes? You aren't a real Sasquatch, Larf realizes aloud. The other Sasquatch moves, removes its head. Of course I'm not. Sasquatches aren't real. The guy underneath replies. There is no other Sasquatch. It was all a big fake. Larf is disappointed, but at least he can return to his quiet life in the woods. Then, while Larf is waiting for, for the bus back home, a voice says, your bunny is super cute. Larf looks up. And this time, what he sees seems exactly right. It looks him right in the eyes and blinks. It's covered in hair, but has no zipper. And its feet are enormous. My name is Cheryl, and this is Patricia, the other Sasquatch says, smiling. Like Larf, she had come to meet the real Sasquatch. Now it seems she has. Larf invites her over for supper next Wednesday. They are the only two of their kind in the whole world, after all. It's just the polite thing to do. Cheryl agrees, but I should tell you, neither Patricia nor I eat meat. Larf decides that just as soon as he gets home, he's going to have a bath. After he does his laundry, of course. There's our story. So start thinking about the character, the setting, and then the plot. And I'm gonna move over to the whiteboard. All right, kiddos. So behind me is what we're going to be doing on our paper, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that first. You're gonna get a piece of paper, and this is actually my one from yesterday. I'm just gonna use it again to show you, so I'm not wasting paper. So you're gonna take your piece of paper, okay? You're gonna turn it this way, because this seems to be easiest. And then you're going to take this side and fold it over this way. Don't pinch it yet. And then you're going to take this side and fold it over this way. Again, don't pinch it yet. You're creating almost a burrito. Okay, it's like a burrito in here. Once this side is even with this right here, you can go ahead and pinch down. So you can pinch this side here. And then this side, all right? So it looks like this, right here. Okay, once you're here, you're gonna take the top and fold it down to the bottom. I'll show you that again. Top to the bottom. And then you're gonna pinch that fold right there. So it looks like this. If yours doesn't look like this, go back in the video and try it again, okay? And if you did it correctly, when you open it up, you should have six boxes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then you're gonna take your pencil and you're just gonna draw those folds. You're gonna trace the folds. So draw the line here, draw your line here, and draw your line here. Notice mine is not perfect. It does not matter. Nothing in life is perfect, okay? So once you have drawn, drawn your lines, and remember, you can pause this video at any time if I'm going too fast, okay? So once you drew your lines in the first box, you're going to write characters. In the second box, you're going to write setting. In the first, in the box under characters, you're going to write first, and then next, and then then, and last. So again, you have characters, setting, first, next, then, and last. And this matches what I have on the board right here. So I'm gonna use the whiteboard to show you how to do this. All right, so we're thinking back to our story, Larf. Who were the important characters in Larf? There were some characters that were not that important. Okay, so first we had Larf. And then the bunny was a character, but he didn't, he wasn't really in the story a lot, that he was in the picture, but it didn't talk about him a lot. Then I had the humans, but there wasn't a lot about them either. Who was at the end of the story that was pretty important to Larf? Do you remember? 
it was another Sasquatch and her name was Cheryl. Cheryl, okay. And for setting, do you guys remember where he said he was at the beginning of the story? It said that he lived in the woods. Lark lived in the woods. Okay. And then where did he go in the story? Hmm. And I'm going to look back in my book because I forgot the name of it. So I'm turning my pages back and back. And remember, if we were in the classroom, we would be doing this also. Okay. But now you can just go back in the video. Okay. So the name of the town was called Hunter Fitz. So Hunter That's a strange, strange name. Okay. So this is where, now when, when did the story take place? Hmm. Do we know the time of day? It didn't say at three o'clock, right? It took place during the day. It took place over multiple days, really. So let's go with a season. Do we know what time of year it is? Let's ask some questions. Was it snowy? No, so it's not winter. Was it rainy? No, so it's not spring. Was it cold? So not fall. He was gardening. Do you remember he said he was gardening? And you do that in the summer and the spring. But we said it didn't happen in the spring because it wasn't rainy. So we're left with summer. Summer. And I'm just going to add during the day. Okay. And remembering you're copying what I'm doing here on your paper. All right. So now we're going to go to our plot. First, next, then, and last. Okay. So I'm going to fill in the top two for you. And then you're going to work on this on your own. Okay, remember I'm scaling back how much I help you because on Friday you're going to, or I'm going to read you a story and then you're going to complete your own, this is called a graphic organizer, your own graphic organizer on literary elements. Okay, so first, next, then last. So what happens first in the story? Hmm. Oh, it's talking about what Lark does with his day, right? So first, Larf jogs, he takes bunny for walks, and gardens. Okay? And like I said on Monday, you can write sentences here if you want to. You can draw pictures here if you want to, or you can do both, okay? If we were in the classroom, we would be doing both. So here's my sentence, Lark jogs, takes bunny for walks, and gardens. So I'm just going to draw Lark jogging. So here's his movement, and this is just a quick picture. So it's probably gonna look funny, but Lark is super hairy. He's a Sasquatch. So there's Lark. Nothing special, I'm not an artist. All right, what happens next? So after it tells us how he spends his day, what happens? Oh, remember he's sitting down in his chair and he's reading the paper and then he's like, a Sasquatch is coming to town? I need to go check this out. So we can say, um, reads paper, wants to see Sasquatch. Okay. And these don't have to be complete sentences because this is just a graphic organizer. Okay, so he reads the paper and he wants to see 
a Sasquatch. So I'm going to draw, here's the paper, it's all this stuff in it, and then there's a picture of a Sasquatch. Okay. <laughs> all right, kiddos, here's your challenge. You are coming up what happens then and last. So go back in the video if you have to, okay? What happens after he reads the paper and wants to go see the Sasquatch? What does he, what does he do? And then after this happens, what happens last in the story? Okay, I know you guys can do it. Good luck, bye third graders.